can I ask for your wise sage advice to young people? So advice number one is put down the phone. Uh, don't use Instagram and, and social media. But uh, to young people in high school and college, how to have a career, or how to have a life they can be proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be happy to, because I, I teach a course at NYU um, in the business school uh, called Work, Wisdom, and Happiness. And the course is, you know, it's advice on how to have a happy, you know, a successful career uh, as a human being. But it, the course has evolved that it's now about three things, how to get stronger, smarter, and more sociable. If you can do those three things, then you will be more successful at work and in love and friendships. And if you are more successful in work, love, and friendships, then you will be happier. You will be as happy as you can be, in fact. So the question is, how do you become smarter, stronger, and happier? Um, and the answer um, to all three uh, is, it's a number of things, but it's you have to see yourself as this like complex adaptive system. You've got this complicated mind that needs a lot of experience to wire itself up. And the most important part of that experience is that you don't grow when you are with your attachment figure. You don't grow when you're safe. You have an attachment figure to make you feel confident to go out and explore the world. In that world, you will face threats, you will face fear, and sometimes you'll come running back. But you have to keep doing it because over time, you then develop the strength to stay out there and to conquer it. That's normal human childhood. That's what we blocked in the 1990s in this country. So young people have to get themselves the childhood, and this is all the way through adolescence and young adulthood, they have to get themselves the experience that older generations are blocking them from out of fear, and that their phones are blocking them from out of just you know hijacking almost all the inputs into their life and almost all the minutes of their day. So go out there, put yourself out in experiences. You are anti-fragile, and you're not gonna get strong unless you actually have setbacks and criticisms and, and fights. Um, so that's how you get stronger. Um, and then there's an analogy in how you get smarter, which is you have to expose yourself to other ideas, to ideas that people that criticize you, uh, people that disagree with you. Uh, and this is why I co-founded Heterodox Academy, because we believe that, that but, you know, faculty need to be in communities that have political diversity and viewpoint diversity, but so do students. Um, and it turns out students want this. The surveys show very clearly Gen Z is not turned against um, viewpoint diversity. Most of them want it but they're just afraid of the small number that will sort of shoot darts at them if they, you know, if they say something wrong. So anyway, the point is um, you're anti-fragile. And so you have to realize that to get stronger, you have to realize to get smarter. And then the key to becoming more sociable is very simple. It's just always looking at it through the other person's point of view. Don't be so focused on what you want and what you're afraid of. Um, put yourself in the other person's shoes. What's interesting to them? What do they want? Um, and if you develop the skill of looking at it from their point of view, you'll be a better conversation partner. You'll be a better life partner. Um, so there, there's a lot that you can do. I mean, I could say, you know, go read The Coddling of the American Mind. Yes. Um, I could say, go read Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, but take charge of your life and your development, because if you don't do it, then uh, the the older older protective generation and your phone are going to take charge of you. So on anti fragility and coddling the American mind, I, if I may read just a few lines from Chief Justice John Roberts, oh, which I yes, find I is that, really man. beautiful. So it's not just about viewpoint diversity, but it's real struggle, absurd, unfair struggle that seems to be formative to the human mind. He says, from time to time in the years to come. I hope you will be treated unfairly so that you will come to know the value of justice. I hope that you will suffer betrayal because that will teach you the importance of loyalty. Sorry to say, but I hope you will be lonely from time to time so that you don't take friends for granted. I wish you bad luck again from time to time so that you will be conscious of the role of chance in life and understand that your success is not completely deserved and that the failure of others is not completely deserved either. And when you lose, as you will from time to time, I hope every now and then your opponent will gloat over your failure. It is a way for you to understand the importance of sportsmanship. I hope you'll be ignored so you know the importance of listening to others. And I hope you will have just enough pain to learn compassion. Whether I wish these things or not, they're going to happen. And whether you benefit from them or not will depend upon your ability to see the message in your misfortunes. 
He read that in a middle school graduation. Yes, for his son's his son's middle school graduation. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Only that's much more beautiful. Yeah, and uh, I think your work is really important, and it is beautiful, and uh, it's bold and fearless, and it's a huge honor that you would sit with me. I'm a big fan. Thank you for spending your valuable time with me today, John. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Lex. What a pleasure. <laughs>